Hey everyone from the Webflow community and welcome back to another Flow Ninja video. In this one, we're going to be going over in our Flow Ninja checklist and making sure that every single one of your Webflow pages has the technical part of the SEO implemented in the proper way. So let's jump straight into it. So in our checklist, you're going to be able to see a part where we're going to be going over search engine optimization. So there are a few simple things you can do with every single page just to make your website better for SEO. Of course, you're probably going to be getting the recommendations from the SEO consultant. But if you don't do that, kind of, there are just some few things we're following for every single one of our websites to make sure that we kind of are SEO compliant. And then even if we don't have an SEO consultant that our clients can actually rank on, on Google with just these simple, uh, simple things. So uh, the first thing is making sure that you have only one H1 on the page itself. So in this case, like let's say go, going over the checklist, we have this H1 and then sometimes design, designers like to use the H1 style technically multiple times on the pages, but you can create a jumbo heading, you can create a heading one class or something like that if you want to use the heading one size across the page, but make sure that you have only one H1 tag on the website itself. Then the next thing is the heading structure. So based off of that, you want to make sure that you're actually following the heading structure and actually Webflow is going to be giving you the kind of the pass on the heading level on that front also. So you want to make sure you have H1 here. We have an H2, but in this case, you see a designer has used a heading three class. So we created a heading three class and then scaled it to mobile to match heading three. But actually in Webflow, we're using a heading two class because this is a new section and we need content to be nested that way. And then as a new section is starting, we have an H2 tag. Um, then a, a parent element of that H2 is H3. But you can see here we added a heading five class in order to scale the fonts to be smaller according to follow, of course, the design. But then um, like from a technical perspective, we're kind of laying out the website in a much more logical way for Google to actually scan to. Then when we're migrating the website itself, we want to make sure that the SEO title and the SEO description is the same as it was on the previous website. And that, that is for uh, kind of that is for slugs, that is for SEO titles and descriptions, that is for CMS pages. Also, make sure that you actually spend the time to copy uh, what you have in, let's say, WordPress when migrating to Webflow and that everything is matching and being exactly the same as it was previously. Unless, of course, the client has some specific needs and they're telling you, okay, you should be doing this, this or this, whatever on that front. But when you're adding a new website, a completely new build, sometimes we don't have the SEO titles and descriptions to follow to. So we usually recommend our, our team to go ahead and create new SEO titles and descriptions based on the copy that is on the page. Just that we make sure that we don't send over a link to the client and they see just a blank link with no open graph preview with kind of the SEO title description, the open graph image. So we're always creating a custom open graph image description and the title tag in order to make sure to that everything is going to be kind of looking as nice when they share it on social media, LinkedIn or whatever. Then for all texts, uh, kind of, we need to make sure that every single one of our images on this page, we don't have images, uh, but that every single one of our image has the old text added and the old text should be accessible in a way that they describe what the image is, but then also try to have some SEO value. So you can add maybe some location specific items like kind of, let's say for selling cookies in niche, uh, and we have an image of cookies, we can say, okay, um, sweet cookies in niche or whatever, or just that we can try to have SEO value while still describing what the image is for accessibility. Uh, then in terms of the page structure, so we want to make sure that we're following the flow starter way of having the page structure. And that is having the navigation outside of the wrapper, having the footer, that a footer has a footer tag, that the navigation of, I mean, of course we're using a Webflow navigation, so it's going to have the navigation tag. Um, that the page wrap has the main tag added to it, section has the section tag uh, uh, added to it, and you can go and research even more about kind of schematic HTML structure and e go even deeper on that. But these are just some simple tips you can do for every single one of the websites. Then for schema markup, we like adding schema markup for the homepage for every single one of the websites. And that is kind of adding the content for schema, type corporation, name, flow ninja, URL, logo, same as. 
Um, that is kind of the minimum we're doing. And then if we're doing something more, you can go ahead and kind of research the schema, um, JSON, microdata, and kind of all of that um, items for FAQs and for a lot of other items. Depending on the clients, we're going to have a predefined um, kind of requirements, making sure that we have that set for every single one of the websites. Then some simple team, uh, tips for Webflow project settings is going here and then just kind of for going to the SEO tab, making sure that the Webflow subdomain indexing is off. I mean, is on that you, you are disabling indexing from the Webflow subdomain. Uh, we need to check to auto-generate the sitemap for the website to use the default domain for the www version. So in this case, www.flow.ninja needs to be used as the default domain. And this is just because of some problems we had previously with the Webflow SSL. You can have the root domain also being the default one, but in some DNS providers, you're gonna need to do some wizardry on that front, which is not gonna be so fun to do in the end. Uh, then we're always adding the search console so the client can go ahead and track their website in the search console uh, in the proper way, see how, what keywords they're attracting, what, uh, what visitors they're attracting and key, search console is also going to be giving us lighthouse updates, making sure that our website is fast and kind of uh, all of the items on that front. In terms of page and uh, CMS slugs, especially when we're doing a migration, we want to make sure that every single, uh, page and CMS slug is, uh, created the same way as it was on the previous website. So blog is blog, Webflow templates is Webflow templates so that we don't create any unnecessary CMS uh, or your static slugs uh, and have to do unnecessary redirects on that front. Then the next thing is planning the redirects and then adding the redirects to the website. So we don't have, uh, so we have zero 404s on the website itself. For speed, uh, we always test every single one of our websites uh, on GT metrics. So you can see, for example, on this case, our website, Fall Ninja, has a performance of 99. So technically, it cannot be better than this, which I'm completely happy for. So we always try passing 90 plus on GT metrics. So we make sure that visitors are experiencing a fast website. Google recognizes that. And in the end, you're going to end up with a much happier client if you do pass these tests. And then kind of the final thing, I mean, of course, this is just for our agency. We like including Built With Love uh, by Flow Ninja in Niche Serbia so that uh, every single one of our client websites has a reference of who built it and kind of um, that every single one of these checklist uh, items is followed. So that being said, we're kind of done with the SEO part of the website that we're checking. Uh, the next part is going to be the forms. And in the next video, we might go over forms or, and a few more final things you need to check before actually going ahead and sending your website to QA and then in the end going live with the Webflow site. So see you in the next video. Bye-bye.